uh, humiliation presupposes it is deliberate on the part of somebody like the president. Like five hours, five hours in an uh, airport. It is still the same. Oh. It, 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 it presupposes. Why? The five hours pre kind of shows some drama. He wanted the drama? Yes, most likely. So I'm saying you can't quite call it humiliation. And this is what I'm telling the president. Come out. Come mm. out and show you are in charge. Be, 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 be the president you are supposed to be. Mm. Just ask Kinyua to write Ruto. Mm. Hello and welcome to Professor Harmon Manuara's channel. If it's midweek, you know it's understanding politics. And I'm here with Professor Harmon Manuara. Professor, how is this week for you? We're on Wednesday. Good week. Good week? Very good week. You're seeing, you're seeing good things? We are one a little more. <laughs> we are very, we are, we are, you can see we are, we are having a swag. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there are so many things. Delta yeah, yeah. variant, yes, COVID-19. What's your take oh, on it? Oh, it's terrible. We need to be more cautious. Mm -hmm take more precautions. We urge the government to step up vaccination. Mm. But even as we vaccinate, we ask the people of this country to be aware that uh, you need to observe the protocols. Also parents. Parents are crying yeah, because yeah. of school fees. But I, I also, uh, really school fees is something Magoha and the government must stop lying to Kenyans. Mm. There is no free education in this country. Not at all? Not at all. Secondly, mm. and very, very important, is schools have been forced mm. I've just been tweeting this morning about it. Mm. To admit numbers they can't hold. Mm. Magoha and Uhuru are killing education in this country. You've seen more than one million students. Not everybody must go to school. There's no country in the world where everybody goes to school. What do you they mean? Are just a handful. Do, you, do people know how many literate Americans there are? Mm. For example. Do people know? Mm. You see, the person you are forcing to go and mess the education in school needs a functional education and a functional country. Mm. It's better we have numbers who can get proper education to serve this country so that even those who don't get higher education will still benefit. Oh. Then load everybody into school and they will dilute education, make it difficult. All manner of things are now happening in our schools because the, the school management can't just handle the numbers. Yesterday in news, mm. schools are now converting uh, libraries, other things into dormitories. Oh, they, they can't handle the numbers. You know, Magoha must, Magoha must advise the president correctly. Honestly, he's my boss. Mm. But you are killing education. Okay. Uh, it's not good. Okay. And the parents are suffering because of this. Okay. Uh, I want, first of all, to thank you guys for subscribing. For people that have joined, I'm looking at the numbers. They're so good. Go ahead and join. Uh, click that blue button. And for those people that are watching us on Facebook, we don't stream on Facebook. We are only on YouTube. And that is Harman Manyora. So maybe you should visit our YouTube page, Harman Manyora. But also, um, today's conversation, we're talking about Deputy President William Ruto. But first, let us look at some of the comments uh, you shared last week as, we, as Professor did his analysis. He did two videos and he spoke about whether or not uh, Ruto is lying to Kenyans with his economical uh, blueprint and also spoke about other things to do with Raila Odinga uh, climbing into Mount Kenya region. Last week, Professor Harman Manyura shared videos and he said one of them being that Raila Odinga is climbing into Mount Kenya. He called it Operation Ruto Out, Professor. This is Joseph Korn by saying, you're right, Professor, but for me, it's still a smoke screen by Kenyatta and Ruto to smooth, uh, to smooth Arau and finally ditch him. In other words, he is being played. You said once that we are beyond that. We are beyond that. Beyond. There will be consequences if Uhuru tried to play Raila. Mm as there will be consequences if Raila tried to play Uhuru. Mm. That I have said repeatedly. So for now... Yeah, this country cannot afford that kind of... Those kind of games. Mm. Even for Ruto. Mm. I tell Uhuru and Raila, mm. just beat Ruto in an election. Don't play games with him. Mm -hmm. Don't try anything silly. This country is not ready for that. Okay. Uh, Robert, and Raila cannot get 50,000 votes in the mountain. And without COD or NASA arrangement, his national tally at best will be 5 million votes in an election where at least 17 million will be expected to vote. Yes, he, he's speaking about Raila without NASA can't happen for him. And also, in Mount Kenya, he should expect less than 5 million votes. Is that true for you? Votes. 5 million, 5 million votes. Uh, for his total tally. Yes, yes. If I got him right. Mm. This man doesn't know Raila. That's all I can say. Mm. Anybody who knows Raila can't speak like that about Raila. No. He knows he can get more votes. Oh, Raila is a man. He knows this game, my friend. Mm. No. The only 
three people who know this the game okay. in this country, mm. Uru, Raila and Ruto. To say that Raila cannot work minus NASA, that is mm. a big joke. But I also know NASA will be there with him. You know, all we, of them. One of our videos will share. It, uh, we'll we'll speak about. We'll speak about the future for Raila. But for now, what Jolini says. What does the heads of KRA, NSIS, Central Bank Defense Military got anything to do with Wanjiko Inodaya, Muthura, uh, Kiambu, or Juja? You said Uhuru has power in charge. He he's in charge of all these people in the government. What does it have to do with the elections? But you see what I'm saying? What, uh, he didn't get what I was saying. Mm. I was saying those who are saying Uhuru has not helped the Gikuyus and these other people, mm. they are telling us a lie. Mm -hmm. Because they're the ones who are running government. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it is not about elections, it's no, just about what, whether the president yeah, is yeah. in charge. They're the ones enjoying the, the fruits of power. Okay. The fruits of independence are being enjoyed by guys from the mountain. Mm. That's what I meant. Okay. So for them to turn around and tell us Uhuru is doing nothing for them. Oh. It's an insult to us. Mm -hmm. You come from other you parts of the spoke, country. You also spoke about development in, in the central region. Yeah, there's so much development going on. Mm. So they're lying to us. Okay. Uh, Bentuda Bentuda. He says, Buddha, Mkikuyu, Hawezi Pigia, Jaluo, Kura. Would you say this is true? It could be true if he wants it to be true. But if he loves this country, he knows that shouldn't be the case. Mm. We want Kikuyu to vote for Ruto. Mm -hmm. We want Luos to vote for Ruto. Mm. Just as we want Kikuyu to vote for Raila. That is the country we want. So, yeah. so, so he, is he right to say that Raila will not get the Kikuyu votes because that, of tribe? He, he also doesn't understand politics. He's still maybe a young person. <laughs> politics is too intricate uh, for that. Yeah. Luos would never have imagined they would vote for a Kikuyu after all the things mm. Jaramogi, uh, Kenyatta did to Jaramogi and so on and so forth. Mm. But in 2002, all of them to a man voted for Kibaki. Oh, yeah. So what, what is this man saying? These Kikuyus can, can see their future in Raila and they will vote for you. Okay, uh, here is Stephen Kosira. In most of past elections in Kenya, Raila Odinga has been the object of aggression. He has been used as a scapegoat and a common enemy to scare, uh, to scare especially the mountain. This time around, the object of aggression will be William Ruto. Let Uhuru Kenyatta open his mouth. As you rightly say, he will separate men from boys when uhuru speaks will they all vote for raila not even all per se but he'll get a huge number of votes i i don't really know whether that is true but what i know is for mm. a fact is this mm. when uhuru gets into this game mm. it can't remain the same mm. no to underrate uhuru and to imagine that he will get zero votes from the mountain for raila mm. or whoever it is he chooses mm. is to be naive uhuru knows how to play politics oh he'll play his game he hasn't started mm. But someone said when he tries kidogo to what on engage in Yakitanda. But right now the situation called ground as people are saying they are just for Ruto for now. The ground now is for Ruto mm. mainly at the mountain. Mm. But as Kiamba showed you, this could change. Anytime. Anytime. Uh, you also said you did a video, Ruto uh, is lying, how Ruto is lying. You're speaking about the economy. First of all, why did you come up with that topic? And you also spoke about Raila. Why Ruto per se? As a title, yeah, you know, a title it does not cover what is in the book. Uh. A title is just a catchy thing mm. to make the read somebody read the book. Mm. So when you say uh, Ruto's big lie, mm. and inside there you can also there's the Raila lie. Mm -hmm. So uh, you, I could have said the Raila big lie. But do you honestly feel like the the bottom up approach is a lie? Raila and the, and the Ruto are lying to Kenyans. Mm. Professor Paul Delay says, Why, I, wow, I wish you ran for president. You have given Kenya uh, how to raise from poverty mentality I, uh, to fight corruption, free education, quality health care, and modern housing, not living in Mukuru Kwa Jenga in this century. Bravo, Professor uh, Mikato Tours and Safari says, it's sad that no leader is talking about the cost of education. It's abnormal to pay 50K for a grade to uh, surely. You've spoken about yeah, yeah. education, you've spoken about the bottom up approach, and the question question of corruption you're calling it theft and theft it is yes. uh here is tim okari professor that how that was really that was a really good lecture hope they will stop the nonsense playing with kenyans emotions we want real and actual bl blueprint on how to empower kenyans economically what blueprint would you love would you like to see what would w give us an example of something you would like to see uh, the politicians saying when it comes to corruption it's not a question of politician it's a man at the top mm. ruto raila if Manyora had the power to be president, what mm. would I do? Mm. First of all, I'll put people at the center of everything I'm doing. Mm. I'll want to make Kenya a welfare state. I'll say this. Mm. Where there's a basic minimum, everybody's entitled. Mm. Minimum. Best possible quality education. Free. In the word free. Mm. Free as in free. 
free mtoto anatoka kwa nyumba yako anaenda shule you don't spend one shilling not even on uniform nothing free quality health care that kind of thing mm-hmm. then i will address the issues of taxation mm. the rich don't pay taxes oh. companies are always declaring losses so as not to, to pay taxes they are always using measures of avoidance mm. you know there's tax evasion and tax yeah, avoidance. avoidance they always avoid tax mm. they have hired the best accountants they don't pay tax mm. i will address that i will immediately erase any tax that touches on the people irrespective of their class vat will go immediately there will be nothing like irrespective VAT. of their class yeah because vat you tax even a person who is dying because mm. when you buy a bandage when you buy an aspirin when you buy things you know whatever you are buying that are taxable mm. that are vetted mm. irrespective of you go out, buy a packet of maize flour unga mm. when whenever it is vetted mm. irrespective of who you are oh. you must move that kind of tax Re- lower the tax burden from Kenyans tax people less in terms of the actual amount you get from somebody mm-hmm. but improve the economy in such a way there'll mm-hmm. be more taxpayers don't scare away investors because of the mm-hmm. bad taxation in the oh, country oh. those are some of the things you can do, do you while th- pursuing a welfare state w- would you say pay as of now in the country is it's, fair per it is no per you see the problem with taxation in this country mm-hmm. It, it, it lands on manyora who who can't escape because it is his salary taxed mm, mm. you get it yeah so you tax people like us because we we have no option but ata to chick your pesa before you is your employer ambaye anakata tu 100000 shilling 30000 imeenda bila wewe kuongea i would want instead of that 30000 from my salary mm. let it even be 10000 mm. even 8000 mm. but let there be many people paying that 8000 from every 100000 uh, you get it yeah I will also do what this award I can't quite remember it's, it's the term in economics mm. uh, in labor uh, relations mm. whatever it's called it. mm. where the difference between the lowest paid Kenyan and the highest paid Kenyan mm. must be a reasonable gap High, so I will yeah in terms of salary yeah, oh. this award in Mesa, what, what it's called mm. I will want to pursue policies if I'm the president that reduces the inequalities in society mm. you know you can't have equality you can talk of equity but mm. we also talk about the difference between the rich and the poor is too excessive to be sustainable mm-hmm. i remember in one of my videos last week or whatever this week mm-hmm. i think it's last week or this week mm-hmm. where i said a society where for example like in nairobi where almost 80% of the people live in slums mm-hmm. and by the our definition of a slum is wrong kibra kawangwara are not slums mm-hmm. those are other things you need a word for it <laughs> it is umoja kayole which is a slum uh. Those are slums. So it is actually doing better w- in South Africa than yeah. than our Kibra here. So so Eto is a slum mm. which is like like umoja like buruburu. Yeah. So it's buruburu which is a slum. But Kibra you need another word for it. Mm. And I'm telling you anybody sleeping in the state house soundly mm. Mm. snoring when his citizens are sleeping in Kawangware mm. he must be a joker. So there is so much that needs to yeah, be done. Yeah, if I'm the president, I will not allow that. Okay. Uh, here is uh, Christine Wekulo. Let me finish with you. You're saying, Professor, you said it in black and white today, and he and uh, he's grateful uh, for the video where you spoke about the economy. When we come back, let's talk. Let's, let's take a look at the talk. Uh, Ruto was uh, was denied access to JKIA to fly over to Entebbe. Wilson Airport, I think. It, it, it was Wilson Airport. I think so. <laughs> to go to Entebbe visiting yeah. Museveni yeah. and. Uh, People are asking whether democracy is there. <laughs> Deputy President William Ruto was stopped on Monday from flying over to Entebbe Airport in Uganda from Wilson uh, because of reasons that were not clear. Actually, he was being asked for clearance. And Professor, my thoughts on this are, uh, is this humiliation good for the country to look at the Deputy President and saying, look, uh, he cannot even fly. He, be, since he became Deputy President, this has never happened before. Is this good for the country? You can't call it humiliation before you have the facts. Mm. Uh, humiliation presupposes it is deliberate on the part of somebody like the president. Like five hours, five hours in an uh, airport. It is still the same. Oh. It, 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 it presupposes why, why, that the, the, somebody is responsible mm. other than him. Mm. 
How about if it is him trying to gain mileage out of they it? They were asking, Bonga points. Were asking for birth certificates, letters the from the chief. If I'm the president, for example, once oh. I go to the airport, mm. I wouldn't even go there before I'm, before clearance. Oh. Why would I leave current home before I'm clear? But it has never happened oh. before. Why would I leave? I, once I, I have an idea, I'm not going to be allowed. I won't mm. leave my house. Secondly, once I get there, and I'm told to seek clearance, I'll fly, ba I'll fly back to my office in Harambe House as I wait. Mm. Or I go to the VIP lounge, if it was International Airport. Mm. At Wilson, so close, I can go back to Karen and carry on until it is cleared. But Why The five hours pre uh, kind of shows some drama. Mm. He wanted the drama? Yes, most likely. So I'm saying you can't quite call it humiliation. Why, why would it you? could be self-ignited. Why would you say that uh, he was denied clearance? Everybody's talking about now. Yeah. Everybody's saying he has been humiliated. Mm. You see, you have asked me why he was humiliated. Oh. Maybe that's what he wanted. The first reason. But I'm not saying that's the case. Mm. I'm saying we don't have the facts. Mm. So we can only speculate. Mm. You can only speculate if he was stopped by the government. Mm. Why? Okay. And if yes, why in such an humiliating manner? Okay. Those are just speculations. Okay. Would yeah. you say that uh, they are failing to understand the people if uh, he was it was supposed to be humiliation for him. Would you say that they're not understanding some of the things that you've been saying that yeah. uh, they're giving him sympathy votes? Yeah, if, if, if somebody set out from Harambe House or State House mm. or Karen and the Capitol Hill to frustrate Ruto, then they don't understand politics mm. because she gains from it. Oh. Yeah. So as, as of now, they yeah. should have done a little bit Because if, 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 mm. if the president didn't want Ruto to travel, mm. And this is what I'm telling the president. Come out. Come mm. out and show you are in charge. Be, 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 be the president you are supposed to be. Mm. Just ask Kinyua to write Ruto. Mm. So when this stuff comes out, the letter is just given to the press. People are asking. Yeah, just if, tell Ruto, mm. I'm not happy with you are going to Uganda mm. without a reference to, to, to my office or mm. to me. Or without or whatever you are doing there is not good to me. Mm. Next time you want to go to Uganda, let's clear with me but, first. But you see, yeah. it was private. It was a private flight. There is nothing there is private no about need for clearance There is nothing for him. private about a deputy president. Mm. And the past has shown whenever he goes, his host is the president of Uganda. Mm -hmm. That can't be private. Can't be private. They might just be if friends. They, if, if, if Kamara Harris... Mm. Kamala Harris, uh, Kamala Harris, Kam Ka Kamala, 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 Kamala Harris, Harris yeah, yeah. leaves the United States, mm. or oh, private, she's coming to, she's going to Russia, mm. for example, and then she's having a nice time with Putin. Do you think, do you think Biden will like it? Uh -huh. it? It doesn't work like that. There's no time you can be private citizen. Mm. A, a cabinet secretary can be a private mm. citizen. Mm. A president cannot. Oh. A deputy president cannot. People are not, f are failing to distinguish mm what we call a private visit mm. from an official visit mm. private versus official mm. that is one thing on one hand mm. to do something privately is an entirely different thing mm. you get it mm -hmm. a private visit doesn't mean you do things privately oh you, you get it oh you can't remove the cloth of president mm. or dp mm. just because it's a private visit mm -hmm. no you are received if it's a private visit mm. You are not received in an official way. What, what would you say this yeah. mix of our democracy in the country where the DP cannot fly? Uh, and you remember Miguna's story? People are comparing it just no, a little no, bit. No, no, Miguna is another story. But I think the deputy president, I'm appealing to the deputy president, do not overdo it if you are doing it. If you are doing these, these things to, to look for sympathy, stop. You know why? We have a whole year to go before elections. You cannot be at this game for a year. Mm. It works under surprise, quick shot. Mm. When this man was kidnapped mm. in 1997, mm. he ended up beating Uhuru in Gatundu. Gatundu. Mm. You, you know why? Eh? Yeah. Because people were crying he has been kidnapped. Could mm. he have been kidnapped in, for a year? Mm. These kind of things work for a very short time. Then you get sympathy votes. A few days to election. If you start, if I'm Uruto and I'm starting this thing, Mm. of doing things for publicity for sympathy mm. one year to elections my friend you lose it all but and for the president i will tell him even if you are justified to do things before you do them so f so long as they touch on william ruto mm. always ask yourself what will the public perceive mm. 
and that is where I'm heading. That is for Uhuru Kenyatta. Yeah, what do you think this will lead now? Ruto has followers, yes. uh, more followers than, let's say, anybody in the country compared to Raila and Uhuru. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. do you think this is going to make of his supporters? People are, uh, people are feeling Ruto is being persecuted. Mm. He's gaining bonga points. Mm. He has added on the number of people who would mm. vote for him. Mm. They are going up mm. because of such silly things. So unless Uhuru is playing what we call advantage, mm. he can be playing advantage Ruto. Mm. You pretend to be helping Raila or things, mm. but the things you are doing end up advantaging Ruto, being advantage Ruto. Oh. Unless he's doing that, mm. then his advisors must be asleep. The people are calling for the DP to resign because these fights have already started and they, they don't seem to be ending soon. Should he now step away from the government and say, let's fight head on? I also suspect, and I could be wrong and I wish I'm wrong, mm. Ruto is driving towards resignation. But he's doing it in such a manner he will get maximum capital out of it. Oh. A series of things like this. You know? Yeah. A series of things where he's being humiliated mm. and against bonga points and sympathy. Mm. A series of them. Then finally one genuine one, one big one, mm. and says, enough is enough. And he moves out. Uhuru, you can stay with your government. Mm. And he will move out with a bang. Mm. And, and I want Uhuru. Uh. There will be a stampede from his government to Uhuru. To that will be the end of it. Oh. He will not manage it. And I've said it before. Ruto will live with a lot of people. I have said Ruto cannot win an election when Kenyans go to vote. And he knows it. So therefore, he's planning his things in such a way there is some kind of stampede, some kind of commotion. <laughs> and then before Uhuru knows what is going on. Yeah. He's been run out of town. Finally, let me ask you, Prof, what lessons yes. do you think we are learning? What, what, what should Kenyans see from what is happening between the president and the deputy president, or even if not the president, the state, when, when it comes to the same? One, I am beginning to be convinced. Mm. We are not at a stage where we can have a deputy president that cannot be sacked by the president. Yes. W why That's this? where I am now. Why? I am increasingly convinced mm that we will need to revise, revert to a vice president who can be sacked to avoid this kind of shenanigans. You know what? Mm. We are a fragile economy. Mm. There are too many flashpoints in a country like this. Mm. Something small can, can destroy the country. Mm. So you want to avoid features. You want to avoid situations that can lead to a state that we can all regret. Mm. Okay? Mm. To pity the vice president, the deputy president against the president in a tribally charged country like ours mm. is dangerous. It's to court with disaster. Mm. And therefore, let's just be bold. Let's buy the bullet. Let's give the president, whoever it is, the power to appoint his cabinet, including the deputy president, and fire them when he wishes. If that would have happened, yes. we wouldn't be seeing what we are seeing right now. We would not now. be seeing these shenanigans. Mm. And, then, and the DP would be out already? Yes. That will be okay for me. When Ruto becomes president, oh. he, he, because there's something people don't understand mm. about deputy governors and deputy presidents. Mm. Across the world, there's something people don't understand. Mm. The deputy president is like a spare wheel. Mm. You cannot remove a spare wheel and put on before you have a tire pa puncher. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. The deputy president must be 100% loyal mm. to the president. He doesn't exist. Mm. The deputy governor has no existence of his own. Mm. The deputy president, the vice president in America has no existence of his own. Mm. You have never heard of them. They are never there. A mm. deputy president is a spare wheel. But Just in case something happens. You know, we are polite. We use good language, euphemisms. Because we don't want to say in case something happens, mm. we need to have somebody there. Mm. That is the role of the deputy president and deputy governor. Mm. It cannot be any other way, but, anywhere. But that then yes. would limit Kenyans from making the decision of voting for both the president you and the You don't vote the for the president and the deputy president. Mm. Again, it's a mistake. That's what has no, been happening. No, that is wrong. It's not true. Mm. What you are telling, you know there are things we can't say mm. because we are polite to ourselves and to everybody. Mm. We are asking you, we are making you governor. Mm. Okay? Because we think you can do it. Mm. But you know you are a human being. Mm. Supposing you are impeached. This is the person we want now. We want to know who will take over from you. Mm. In case something happened to you because you are mortal. Mm. 
and you disappear from the picture, mm. as the insurance people say, who will take over from you? Mm. Show us the person. So you show us the person that I am the president. In the event something happened to me, this man, I am telling you, or this woman, Kam Kamala Harris, will be your president. Mm -hmm. So we elect you knowing in the event something happened to you, Kamala Harris is there. When we, we look at Kamala Harris and say, fine, she can be a president. Mm -hmm. Then we vote for you. That is the only way there is Kamala Harris. There is no other way. Isn't this we are not electing Kamala Harris uh. to govern with Joe Biden. No. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. There is nothing like that. A deputy president is not a co-president anywhere in the world. So is this just yes. a little bit cont uh, contrasting or contradictory to the fact that the president can now fire the DP and people have voted saying that uh, we have elected you knowing that Kamala Harris... So now, yeah. when we elect uh, the president, mm. we now elect him knowing mm. that he has the power mm. to fire and hire. Oh. Then Kenyans are lazy. So in that case, we, 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 we redesign our constitution. We, re we, re we go back to the drawing board, we re engineer, we look at the architecture of our constitution and safeguard ourselves. In, because the president has the power to fire and hire the DP, what can we do so that he doesn't misuse that power? Oh. We put it in the constitution. Oh. You, you get it? Yeah. How, what do we do to avoid making the president run wrong? Mm -hmm. But Kenyans are lazy. They go for lazy options. Okay. Yeah. We'll come back. Let's take a look. Uh, would you rather, finally, as we conclude, remember, this is the Harman Manura channel and we are not on Facebook. <laughs> Professor, you have an event. You need an event organizer, Dindi Nyoro or Senator Susan Kihika. An event? Yes. Dindi Nyoro looks like he can, he can jump around faster. Mm. Bring more people? Yeah. Susan Kihika? Yeah, she's good, but uh, she won't match Ndindi Nyoro. Okay, Kimilili MP did Mas Baraza or Kidura Kindiki as your personal assistant. How do you have somebody who slaps people? You can't, <laughs> uh, I can't touch, he's my friend. He's my friend, but I'm about to end the friendship. Did yeah. Mas Baraza has done a bad thing. Uh, that contractor? Yeah. That is very bad. Okay, uh, Kenan Walie MPL Das Origadi Gashagwa as uh, your school's director. You need, you have opened a new school and you need a director. I think I'll go for Rigadi Gashagwa. Not Kenan. Kenan is a good friend. He's a good man. He's capable, quite educated. But Rigadi is hands-on. Remember, he was a DO for quite a while. He can be a tough man. He's a tough businessman. Tough businessman. Other things not withstanding. Oh, yeah. but you don't care about the allegations? Perhaps? Those ones are... In Kenya, we have gotten used to them. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Professor, for coming through. This has been Understanding Politics, coming to you every midweek uh, right here on Professor Harmon Manure's channel. Until we meet and have these conversations again, I hope you have yourselves a lovely rest of your day. <laughs>